Welcome everyone. My name is Jason Lehman. I'm the marketing team lead at Fishbowl Solutions. And today we're going to be discussing ways that you could simplify Oracle Web Center content administration and save time with Fishbowl's administration suite. So here's our agenda for today's discussion. I'll give a brief overview at the beginning around who Fishbowl is and what we do. And then I'll cover off the various components that make up our admin suite for Oracle Web Center content. There's four components that comprise admin suite. They are advanced user security mapping, subscription notifier, enterprise batch loader, and workflow solution set. And so within each one of those components, I'll uh, give you some use cases, give you some ideas of the ways that those components can be utilized in your organization to help you streamline some of, some of your administration tasks that you have with Web Center. At the end, I'll be sharing some additional resources regarding the product. At the very end, we'll also have some contact information. So if you want to follow up with anyone here directly at Fishbowl, I'll include some information on how you can reach those individuals. So a quick few moments on Fishbowl. So Fishbowl Solutions has been an Oracle Web Center Oracle partner for many years. Uh, we've had many different projects. One of the reasons for doing today's webinar is Having the, all that experience in those years working with, with customers, uh, we've developed applications and um, value-add products that really help fill some of the gaps that we've seen in Web Center. And so we really kind of hang our ad on the innovation that we've brought to the Web Center product and being able to uh, fill some of those gaps. So we have expertise across not only content management, but portal and business process automation, really around uh, paper intensive processes like invoice processing and things like that. Uh, very happy and proud to say we've won many awards along the way. And again, we our goal is to really help organizations manage, uh, better manage the complex um, information that they have within their organization. And we do that around typically starting with our consulting services. So kind of the full spectrum of consulting services that we offer at Fishbowl Obviously, with Web Center content, we've worked with a lot of organizations um, on the various components that are, that are in Web Center, records management, document management, imaging and process management. As I mentioned, we also do portal work. And we also do Google, we're also a Google uh, search partner. So as you consider the search options for Oracle Web Center, uh, one of the biggest complaints that we get from customers is we can't find anything. So we've, to help solve that problem, we've partnered with Google and integrated Web Center with the Google Search Appliance to bring that Google, that Google uh, search experience to, uh, to Web Center users. Uh, outside of that, um, to better suit our customers and, uh, and help them the best that we can, we've also um, sharpened our sword, if you will, and brushed up on our skill sets around ADF and SOA, so helping organizations if they have needs there um, to further enable their Web Center solution. Um, so really, as I mentioned, it's that, it's that full service provider from the install of your system to the tuning of your system and the integration of your system going forward. Some of the solutions that we deliver, so I mentioned invoice processing, so we help organizations leverage Web Center to streamline the paper intensive processes they have in their organization. One of the most popular is accounts payable automation. I talked a little bit about Google Search. So really it's bringing the Google search experience into the enterprise with the Google search appliance, which was a network appliance, kind of as Google, Google's magic in a box, if you will. And uh, you, we've got connectors that can integrate Google search with Web Center. Start a lot of times with helping organizations develop their enterprise information strategy. So as you look at the information organization, the content that, that feeds your organization that uh, you need to act on, the transactional information, the more business content information, uh, what do you want to do with that information? How do you want it distributed? How do you want it to be viewed? What are the various channels for sharing? Things like that. So we help organizations kind of start from step one and develop in that strategy. Around user experience and mobile design. So again, with the user experience so being so critical, so applications like Web Center, making sure that uh, it's got that next-gen user experience. This comes a lot, comes into play a lot on the portal side organizations are looking at to really help leverage or help increase the employee engagement, for example, of an HR portal, so making sure that that user experience is inviting, the navigation is very easy. And then also being able to take that information from the desktop and make sure that it can be viewed on a, desk, on a, a mobile application 
iPhone or iPad, um, you know, so on and similar. And then really this concept of self-service. So as you look to Web Center to be that, that application that you're going to use to centralize your information and then serve up that information to users across your organization, uh, we really help organizations whether it's Web Center, Content, and Portal to build that self-service portal to do that. So with that, I'll jump in uh, and discuss today's topic around Admin Suite. And again, I mentioned that uh, Admin Suite makes up four components. Um, and what we, and the reason I'm developing some of those components along the way is we've really seen a lot of administration challenges with Web Center. I've just bolded a few here. I'm not going to discuss all these in detail. Um, but as organizations look to really to fully utilize Web Center and deploy it within their organization um, to really get what they want out of the solution. And this is not, you know, Web Center is not unlike other enterprise applications where there's, you know, customers are just very creative and they think of other ways that they could utilize the system. So a lot of times what happens is organizations turn to their admin or their development group and say, we need additional functionality or feature, uh, write a custom component for that. So there's a lot of time and money spent doing that custom component development. Uh, one of the biggest things that I'll cover today is Users have, um, there's a delayed access and sometimes there's a hard time really connecting the dots on why users are having access issues to the system. So not being able to quickly diagnose why a user can't access um, certain content or is a member of a certain group that has access to that content, it's hard for organizations to quickly troubleshoot those. And then as an admin, you're probably, uh, for those administrators on the line today, you're probably very familiar with having to perform many manual and redundant tasks over and over again. So. One common uh, thing that we've seen is uh, loading content into the system. Um, how many check-in similars do you have to do to get content loaded into the system um, and things like that. And then really, as you look at Web Centers being your enterprise information system, your content management system for your organization, the biggest thing to help uh, users really get familiar with the system is to quickly get them onboarded. And then you want, um, organizations want to quickly, you know, drive adoption across the organization. Well, if, if users can't get access to the system quickly and, uh, you know, they might start forgetting about it or they could start to revert back to just sharing stuff on file shares and their desktops and things like that. So those are some of the challenges we've seen. And so with that, we took some of our most popular components that we've developed over the years to really help streamline those administration tasks and we've packaged them all up into our admin suite product. So this is really that comprehensive offering, one package of these solutions. So uh, those solutions that I mentioned, again, were advanced user security mapping, subscription notifier, enterprise batch loader, and workflow solution set. So as you'll see, I've included some screenshots for our discussion today. Each one of these components has a, a, a GUI, so there's a user, user interface for admins and other users to go in and actually configure the system, leverage the system for their intent. Um, and so that there's a lot of configuration that can be done. Um, from with that configuration, there's also a lot of additional stuff that can be that can be developed or scripted out um, with those solutions. That, that some some of them provide kind of a go a jumpstart package to uh, to what you're looking to do. And what we've seen with Admin Suite is that it's been really popular for organizations that are new to Web Center. So if you're a new Web Center or if your uh, organization is new to Web Center, you're a new Web Center admin or let's say your organization has been using Web Center for a while and you're the new admin, um, there's, these tools really help you, you know, uh, set, make sure that the expectations of the user are met, um, that when additional feature and functionality are needed, these tools really are comprehensive, so they're, they're, there's a lot of them that are built in that, again, over time, as we get feedback from customers, we just built these into the solution. So they're, they're just there and ready for you to configure and start utilizing. We've also seen inversion upgrades where you're moving from uh, 10G to 11G from a Web Center perspective using legacy versions and you need to uh, quickly, um, for example, export or, um, or load content in the system. There's our, this tool set will really help you do that. And then as you're looking to expand, so there's tools and util the, there's utilities and components. These components include features that help you export um, various configurations that you've made within these components, such as subscriptions. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that later. And then staff changes. So as I, I mentioned earlier, if you're a new admin, there was a previous admin, um, again, these solutions are really comprehensive enough that you know that within your tool bag, so to speak, uh, a lot of the features and functionality that users are going to request for additional business value that you're looking to drive out of Web Center, a lot of that functionality is already there. So we're going to start off talking about advanced user security mapping. 
And the reason that we developed this solution is that uh, we, we saw that organizations were struggling with integrating the information from the user directory, LDAP or Active Directory, um, to the content server. So um, we wanted to provide a way to make that a lot more streamlined and, and easier. So if you think about organizations and they have to um, set up groups in their directory and then ensure that those, the right people are in those groups and then integrate that with content server, um, we wanted to make that as easy as possible for them to do that. Along with the group permissions of the directory and those integrations to content server, we also wanted to be able to um, help organizations assign aliases, which um, out of the box, content server doesn't, doesn't allow organizations to do that or it's much more difficult to do that. <clears throat> and then being able to import that user information into the content server. So um, with 11G, there's a synchronization option now that, that can help you do this. But again, with older versions of, of content server, it was very difficult. There was uh, um, really no way to import that information in the content server um, and inherit all those, all those groups um, settings that were, that were configured in the external system. And then really provide a, the ability to report on um, when users come to you and say they don't have access to something, they can't see certain documents, um, we wanted to provide an interface and the ability to report on that and then give users, um, the admin and the user, the ability to quickly troubleshoot that problem and make sure that they, they can see um, the content that they should be able to see. Um, and when all that comes up, again, just the admin has that, that, one, that one tool that they can go to, to to troubleshoot any of those user access issues. So I mentioned around directory configuration. Um, if, your organizations have, if your organization has a large number of LDAP groups, um, what ends up happening a lot of times is there's, there's, a, um, there's a lot of groups that end up getting, required, getting um, created. So over time, the more um, groups that are created and, and mapped to um, roles or um, permissions in the content server, you can quickly balloon that. Um, that quickly gets very big, and it can impact from performance. So um, one of the biggest things, as I mentioned earlier, is that really that integration between your directory and the content server um, for the various uh, security settings. On the control side, uh, what we've seen there is that there's a lot of, um, there's usually some disconnect between the IT team of an organization and the application team, uh, in this case, web center of organization. So um, really who has control when a user needs to be assigned um, you know, wants to see certain content and that content exists in a certain group, um, who really um, facilitates that process of making sure those, that user uh, can get that access to those, that content. I mentioned troubleshooting, um, being able to quickly identify and resolve user access problems, and then new users. So a lot of times when new users are, um, come on and they come on to an organization that need to be added to, to Web Center, um, there's this lag between when they um, should be added and if they need to be, uh, so when they want to, want to get content out of Web Center and quickly be assigned to an alias or a workflow, there's that lag process or the, there's that lag between uh, when they um, first log on the system and the content that they see as well as, um, you know, workflows or access, access control lists that they would be a part of. And then the auditing, so having that view into um, if a user doesn't have access to a certain group, you can quickly audit and see why not. So a little bit more on directory configuration. So um, as you're probably aware, the standard configuration for Web Center includes a mapping of one group um, in the directory to a role or an account with permissions and content servers. So um, you can think about, um, you know, if there's four groups in Active Directory and you need to, um, you need to uh, assign those to um, various um, groups and have different roles for each, um, you could quickly that could quickly grow over time. So if, if there's a, um, if there, each account needs, if there's four groups and there's a, accounts for read, read, write, read, write, delete, read, write, delete, admin, you can imagine that with all the, the groups that, would, that, that could, be, could be there and all the permissions that they need, um, that, that could quickly get very large and, again, a, an impact performance. So um, the other thing to mention here is from directory configuration is that the standard integration doesn't support nested groups or group of a group. So it, you can't take um, any of the um, group permissions of one group that are, that, that's part of this nested group 
and then um, transfer that quickly over to another group, and then they would have access to that content that would be part of that group. So another um, view into that is this is a, this is a screenshot of, of the content server admin where you have uh, the various organizational units, and then you have your role, you have your roles and your uh, group objects below that, and then you have your accounts. So as I mentioned before, um, if you're looking to assign the various permissions of a user, um, you can quickly see that the users could, could depending on their permission, could, have, could be part of multiple, um, multiple mappings to, to make that happen. Again, read, read, write, delete, read, write, delete, admin. So it's, how does Awesome help from that directory configuration standpoint? So not only can you map um, the permissions coming out of the directory to the roles or accounts and content server, you can also assign aliases. So it just makes it easy, very easy through rules to do that. Um, you can also, not only based on the permissions, uh, you can also um, use the user attribute, attributes in the directory to do those mappings. So for example, a user of a certain um, location or department, um, any of those user attributes coming from the directory can be used for those mappings as well, just to make sure that, uh, that uh, the content that they would need to see as part of a group, get their, those mappings get, get quickly mapped out. So here's a screen of uh, what that configuration looks like within advanced user security mapping. So at the top here, we're just showing a few different rules have been created. You can assign a priority to any of the rules, and then they will just be evaluated in that order. So for this um, particular example, we're showing the user attributes of a, a department user. And at the bottom here, we're just saying that if they're part of this, that this given them this role, um, they're members of this account, and then they have these aliases. So again, from a configuration standpoint, it's pretty straightforward. And once you save that rule, then the users of that department um, would just be able to access the content that's that's part of that department or part of that group. The other thing to mention here is you can also deny access to certain users. Um, so, for example, if you want to automatically um, grant permissions to members of a certain um, group, such as HR, but you want to exclude anyone with the title of contractor, you could do that very quickly by, by the rule configuration in, uh, available in, in this component. So as far as uh, access control, so this is the, the, the point I was making earlier about who really controls user access and the content that they can see. So in, in, typical, um, in, in typical implementations, what happens is the user goes to the content server admin and says that they need, to, they need to have access to a certain piece of content or certain content that's been created. And, so, and then the content server administrator will route that to IT who just owns the directory information or the, or the system that maintains that directory information, but they don't really have any understanding or understand what the impact would be of giving that user um, access to that content. So um, the, that disconnect um, could have some implications if, if uh, um, the IT team doesn't really understand what it means when, they're, when, they, give them, uh, when they give them access to that, that content. So um, it's really important that from you know, using awesome that uh, the, the ownership of what content um, and the roles and accounts that people have in content server is really controlled by the content server administrator now, and IT kind of is removed from that process. Another thing that we've seen is the troubleshooting. So um, out of the box configuration, um, the user permissions from the directory are not stored in the content server. So if a user comes to you and says, well, I can't, I can't see this, um, particular piece of content, why not? Um, the, the standard process is you have them um, go to their, their uh, user profile page, and from there they then tell you um, the, the various roles and accounts that are listed and, and what, they, um, what they have access to. So, um, you know, you can, you, you can imagine if you've already done this that this takes some time to actually rectify this all. Um, and um, even more complicated is if you're using credential maps, um, what we've seen is that it's kind of a cryptic way of uh, showing why someone doesn't have access to something. Um, so it is there, and the, the credential mappings are, you know, inherent out of the box. But again, what we've seen with customers is that it's really hard to use that to troubleshoot. Uh, but I will say that Awesome can be used in conjunction with credential maps if you so choose to do that. 
So Awesome's way of handling this is um, just type in the user um, user ID and hit go, and it'll automatically show you the roles, accounts, and aliases that that user has access to. So a very quick way to troubleshoot. Um, one other thing is um, from the user profile page, it doesn't show based on that user ID what the permissions are for that user, and Awesome or Advanced User Security Mapping does do that. So it's just another additional feature that, that is offered um, by using the component. So the other thing that it can be do is um, after you do that uh, troubleshooting, you can actually go through the evaluation steps. So if you're look, looking to dig a little deeper into uh, why someone doesn't have access to certain pieces of content, um, you can go through all the evaluation steps of how users being evaluated, and it'll show you all the groups that they're members of, and then from there you can uh, rectify that problem and get them access to the right content that they need. So adding new users. So um, this is really around a new user comes into the, the organization and uh, they're, they, they need to be quickly added to um, and given the proper account or role um, within content servers. So um, they can't do that, um, and especially from, a, from an alias perspective or workflow or access control list until they've actually logged onto the system at least once. So again, the standard uh, way that that typically plays out is IT administrator will wait for the user to log in to the system, and it's uh, not until they do that um, they they can't they can't uh, do those any uh, they can't do any of those assignments um, for an alias or workflow or an access control list. So once that done, once once they do actually the log in, um, they can add them to the to an alias or or workflow. Um, the, the component ad, advanced user security mapping also includes the ability to import users from LDAP and update their information on a regular basis. So again, uh, with 11G, uh, Content Server does do a little bit of this, uh, but in previous versions, that syncing capability was, was not there. So uh, uh, Awesome does, in, it does include that ability as well. From an auditing perspective, since those permissions aren't stored in the Content Server, um, there's really no way to, to, to quickly see um, um, the users that could access in a, a security group and account. So um, again, from a user interface perspective, um, advanced user security mapping allows you to quickly, um, through, uh, through pickers and pick lists, basically select the security group you want to see. And this, this is all role-based. So if, uh, you, if the user does this, they would only be able to pull back the information that they would have, that they would have actually access to, um, access to see. So they can put in the security group, the account, and the permission level, and then they can quickly see the users that um, they want to have they they uh, that have permission to see content with that um, with, un under those credentials. So this just allows you to quickly uh, quickly do that and uh, um, pull back that that list, and so you can quickly view um, as you as organizations consider certain pieces of content that you want. Um, only certain people to see or restrict and, or to ensure that it's not being seen by those by some people that it shouldn't, you can quickly do that auditing and evaluation process. So the next component I'm going to talk about is subscription notifier. And so subscription notifier is really around sending email notifications for, for content that are um, that have either a normal review process or a periodic review process. And then it has the ability to also update external data sources or sync data between content server and an external source. So from an email notification standpoint, the emails can be, for any piece of content matching the criteria, can be sent to users on a scheduled basis. So for example, any new document that gets checked into the system. Fishbowl uses this extensively for Example, on the marketing side, if, if uh, there's a new piece of marketing content checked in, uh, there's, there's a notification email sent that notifies users that, you know, there's this new content available. Uh, it also has the ability to um, inform or update admins in this case that items are stuck in, uh, in Gen WWW. So if the refinery is down, um, the administrator could get an email and actually re um, respond to that the uh, refinery being down, fix it before a user even is aware of the problem. 
It also has the ability through configuration to notify those that uh, those people that need to know that um, they've had items checked out longer than a certain amount of days, and that's all that's all based on configuration as well. So, for example, if you're reviewing a piece of you've had a piece of content checked out and you're reviewing it and you just forgot, uh, there'll be a little notification you get by email that that has indeed been checked out too long. Please apply your updates and check it back in. So with the notifications, uh, the, it includes the ability to use existing mail templates, or you can create your own custom templates. And then it also allows you to attach documents to email notifications. And this one comes up a lot as if you're looking to share content with an external source. So a lot of times, if you're working with a vendor, and I'll, go, I'll get into this a little bit more a little bit later on, but if you're working with a vendor on like a contract negotiation, and they just want to see um, and, and that, that actual contract needs to be sent to them. Again, these users are outside um, your firewall, so to speak, outside your organization. You can attach those, uh, uh, any of that content to an email, so then they have more context of what they actually need to respond to, and then they can work with you to, uh, on, that, uh, on, that, on that contract. Um, it also has the ability to notify just once, or notify, or always notify when items match the query. So, um, again, based on configuration, you could just have one, um, one email notification, or for any content matching the criteria, you could always be notified. So this is the first interface an admin would see, really, to create a new subscription. And it's from here that uh, you can create that new subscription. You can edit or modify an existing subscription, or you could delete a subscription. So this is kind of the first interface um, that you would see as you create any of the, the notifications um, that you want to that you want to have for Web Center, and then from there, the general configuration screen is, is what I'm showing now. So, um, pretty straightforward. You give the subscription a name, a, a subscription type. So, I mentioned normal or periodic, um, and the normal or per the periodic would be um, around, for example, 90, 60, or 30 days, and be similar to the example that I shared re regarding. A contract negotiation. <clears throat> so you can it can be based on a schedule. You can uh, you can include um, you know where the email is coming from, the users to notify, any aliases. Um, so it also, um, as I mentioned, the ability to group emails. So you could send one email per subscription or one email per content item. And and we've seen users kind of use this a couple different ways where they want to be notified for any content matching the criteria for the subscription, and they kind of use that as a work queue so that they can respond to each one of those um, and then just delete the email. Um, but you can also bundle up, bundle up any subscriptions, any notifications into one email and send those to users as well. So as I mentioned, um, it includes some email templates, but you can also build out your, um, your own email templates um, so you can customize those. And then this is this is the criteria, the the query that actually gets that actually gets written. So then at the bottom, what it includes is the ability to to preview the email that you're about to send. So um, just before that, actually you're you're saving that. You'll you'll see what the email notification actually looks like before uh, any of those uh, any of those queries are run and the notifications are sent. So again, a little bit more on periodic reviews. So um, the example I shared earlier is around the contract. So this is really uh, around, you know, you have this piece of content. You know that, let's say, on an annual basis, it needs to be reviewed. Um, and from a contract perspective for vendors, it's usually around negotiation. So um, if, you, if you have that, that visibility into when it's going to expire and you're getting notified, let's say, 90 days in advance, you have more time then to go back to the vendor and uh, you know, ne negotiate a better rate, a better term, things like that. And so with this feature uh, within Subscription Notifier, it really allows you to um, have that, that, inter that notification plus an interface to take action under the, with those documents. So documents matching this criteria for periodic reviews would appear um, in the content server under Documents Under Review. And then for anyone, any of those that, that uh, um, you've been assigned to, or you have uh, no, you've been noted have a not notification for. You would then go to that interface, and I'll show that in just a, just a couple minutes here. 
And then once you do that, you go to that interface, um, you then have some actions that you can take. So you can either um, have um, set it to no change necessary, check out and revise or approve expiration. So before that's done, um, the, the periodic review configuration, um, I've include, included some snippets of what that configuration looks like here. So again, subscription type, periodic review. Once you select periodic review, then you can um, include the fields or the, the, net, the names of the people that will be, uh, will be notified for that. Um, and, the, and the review dates are, again, the different dates that you would want the notification to be sent. So you could have a notification sent at 90 days, 60 days, and 30 days. And then the screens that the users would see then for the subscriptions um, for periodic reviews um, are, is what I'm showing now. So again, for th this link would appear under the content management menu in the content server. And once they hover over each item, a little pop-up would, would uh, be displayed. Um, or once they click on that, then they would be able to take action. Don't change necessary, check out or revise. Um, for the no change necessary, they can then um, set the next review date. Um, so that could be the next time that this needs to be reviewed. And then hit submit, and that would clear out of their queue. Or they approve the expiration. So if, if content does need to be um, expired, they could do that here and include a message for, for example, why it needs to be expired. Another powerful tool or um, feature of subscription notifiers is the ability to perform data upgrade, data updates and synchronization. So we call these side effects that can be configured with a component as well. And these can be can performed on any content matching the criteria. So a lot of times, uh, what we've seen organizations do is use these to update metadata for, um, a, for a bunch of content items. Um, if they, we've also seen them use this for a checkout, check-in. So um, let's say, for example, uh, content needs to be um, put into workflow after a certain amount of time. Um, that through this configuration, that you can do that. Um, so uh, any of that content that does need that review, and instead of uh, sending the notification for that, it just goes into workflow, goes in the, the right person or, or a group's queue for that review, and then they can, um, they can approve that or, or reject it and, and move that through the system as well. Updating an external database, so any content that, um, there, for example, uh, needs to be updated um, um, in a third-party system or, or importing data from a third-party system, um, the, the subscription notifier allows you to do that as well. And then deleting revisions. So let's say you have a piece of content that gets revised daily or, or weekly. It gets revised enough that you're creating a lot of revisions. Um, you can set the system and configure the system to delete um, revisions that are a certain amount of uh, um, days old or that uh, after a certain amount of revisions have queued up, um, just delete any ones um, you know, after that time. And it's very flexible. So um, it can be performed against multiple data sources. Um, and again, multiple configurations can be leveraged within the system to take advantage of uh, the synchronization. And so here's a screen of, of what that looks like. So again, the, for this example, I'm showing the ability to configure this to update metadata and the field that you want to update the metadata applied to. Um, and then any of the, the scripting that needs to be writ the written is, is here. And the, the options for the side effects are at the bottom, um, you know, as I mentioned, update metadata, check out, check in. Again, another powerful feature that this allows um, administrators to configure um, to do that kind of global update of metadata, um, check out items, so on and so forth. The third component I'm going to talk a little bit about is enterprise batch loader. And so what we saw with this one is there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of data obviously existing in organizations that comes from systems that ultimately they want stored in the content server. So it could be reports from third-party systems that as you think about the various ERP or CRM applications, product management, um, product, um, uh, project management systems, not everyone in your organization is going to have access to those systems, but there's various reports that maybe you want to make more accessible and visible throughout your organization. 
they want to be able to export that report and then we get that quickly loaded into the, into the content server into Web Center so it can be viewed. And really it's, it's a standalone application that just will watch a file folder for changes. So as these reports or this content is, is um, exported to a folder, it'll just watch that folder and then as that content comes in, it'll do um, the necessary processing and mapping of metadata um, into the, to get it into the content server. So it's really, really flexible um, and again, very robust from an administration standpoint. The, the nice thing is you can kind of configure it on a standalone server and then it'll just, based on the schedule, um, it'll just kind of run um, as it's been configured. So once, um, once the content is put to a folder that is being watched, so to speak, the, the um, Enterprise Bachelor allows you to basically um, do the following. You can check in a new document. You can check in a new revision of an existing document. You can update the metadata. So um, the metadata can be mapped from basically what's coming onto the third-party system and what's included in the content, and that you can map that to fields in, in the content server. Or documents can be, can be deleted. So the solution comes with a standard preprocessor that, that allows that to happen. So it'll, it'll read the metadata from this batch load file um, that's been formatted, and then it'll, it'll do the appropriate mappings into the content server. Um, it's also very flexible, so it can, custom preprocessors can be written to retrieve metadata from other databases or other systems. And so with that custom preprocessor, if you need it to, um, to, to do those mappings from a specific system, those all can be written in, you know, for example, we've written, um, help customers write those, or we've written those for such systems as J.D. Edwards and, and uh, other ERP applications. And then uh, one of the other things is because it's running kind of standalone, it's not really being monitored after it's been scheduled and configured the first time, any errors that occur in the administrator can be emailed um, if that happens. This is kind of a, a visual graphic view into that. So over on the left here, you have your third-party system. It's exporting or it's outputting content of some format, um, whatever that might be. If the content has already been formatted into this batch load file, the, the preprocessor will just um, map the metadata and get that, get that content checked into the content server. If the content that's being output to that directory, to that watch folder, and it's not in the, in the requisite batch load file format, the preprocessor can format that file from its native format, map the metadata if necessary, and then get that checked into the content server. All right, the last component I'm going to give an overview on is workflow solution set. And workflow solution set is really probably the most comprehensive um, component we have from the standpoint of it. It includes a lot of features that we've seen over the years really benefit companies that are using content server workflows. So there's actually um, eight components that are included, and most of the time organizations uh, look at the, you know, all these components, and there's really two or three that they really want to use um, that they can really leverage immediately. But again, when you, um, either if you buy, if you purchase admin suite, or you buy uh, just workflow solution sets standalone, all these components are in there. They can all be enabled if you want. Um, so really, again, it provides that value add from a workflow perspective to, for that additional functionality. And we'll go through each one of these um, individually. Um, key delineation, though, is to make, make sure that it's understood that, they, that um, workflow solution set is used for uh, workflows that are created and are um, leveraged within the core content server. The, this is not, um, workflow solution set is not, cannot be used with um, workflows um, that were created with business process management or people workflows. So approve with comments. So um, this is just one of the features that um, can be uh, um, leveraged within the system. And basically, as a workflow goes through and it's uh, um, and you want to approve something, you can add those comments to um, the to to the um, to the workflow um, core content server out of the box. You can just add rejection comments, and this is just another way to um, have, the, have 
the user's the ability to really interact with the content and and the, and uh, add those comments to um, to workflow items. And the important thing, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this more along the way here, is that these comments all get saved um, with within the system. Uh, custom workflow notifications. So um, if uh, um, if you want to uh, um, have a workflow um, uh, sent, uh, email sent based on uh, various steps along a workflow, um, and then really um, provide that uh, um, the ability to customize that email to really give explicit instructions on what users are supposed to do. Um, they, you can do that with workflow solution set. It can it really can be customized um, based on the workflow or the workflow step. The other way, uh, another uh, nice feature is the ability to customize a workflow review frame. So I'll show a screenshot of that next. Uh, most of you probably know what that looks like, but that's really around um, providing an, an, an interface to review, uh, to customize the way the, the review frames are laid out today and what um, instructions are there, the actions that someone can, can take, um, including the approve, the reject, things like that. So. Um, again, from a standpoint of really providing those clear instructions to users of what they're supposed to do um, with the workflow, um, or as well as making sure that um, based on the workflow step, if a particular user shouldn't have the ability to do any of those things like approve or reject or check out native download, all those can be, um, can be configured to show up or not show up. So again, um, I'm sure most of you have I've seen this, but this is what a, a workflow review what workflow review would look like in the content server. At the top here in the frame, you have your instructions, and then you have your task below: approve, reject, checked out, um, and then you have um, access to the various renditions for this piece of content. So, when I mentioned the ability to customize this, um, that's what a workflow solution set will what um, enables you to do is um, customize the instructions and then the, re the workflow review frame, uh, the tasks and the renditions that, that show up um, in, this, in this view. And that is done through a, another user interface um, with this component is quite simply you just basically um, use this interface to, to show up, to, to, um, to uh, configure which of those actions show up um, along with the message that uh, that you want to have within that review frame, within that re review frame. So again, very easy configuration, you know, with pick list and uh, what step it's going to occur, and then you just save that. And then the next time someone, um, so when the once this is saved, when they, the next workflow item is in that review frame, um, any of the configurations that you made here will be applied. Page workflow item. So. This is one that uh, we looked at um, because a lot of users were coming back and saying, you know, um, I just have this long list of, of my workflow items, um, you know, so uh, it's really hard for me and, you know, that long list, um, I really can't, you know, quickly, you know, view the various ones that I have and I can't sort them, you know, things like that. So what we added were a couple ways to actually make it easy for the users as they're process going through their workflow queue to quickly um, sort these, page through them, so on and so forth. So, um, so at the top, as I mentioned, you can page through the list of workflow items in your queue. You can uh, sort by a title. So um, you know you can uh, you can click on the title, and any of these columns are, are sortable. Um, so you you can do, um, that's all possible within the system. You can also filter. So um, are the workflow items that are that are in your queue, um, the filter ability would allow you to, to filter out any ones that you want to see or don't want to see. So again, just being able to quickly access um, you know, the, the workflow items that, that you want to process. And the configure with vis visible columns. So um, what that do, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that um, in the next slide, is for any of these columns that you see here, these are all configurable to either show up, not show up, change the display name, things like that. So that's what that that's what this um, looks like from a user interface perspective. So for the available columns and the displayed columns, for any of the ones that you do want displayed, um, it's just a, a simple process of dragging and dropping from the list of available columns. 
um, over to the, your display columns. And if you actually want to change the caption name of the column, you can do that as well. So again, a very easy way to uh, provide users with the ability to quickly know what they're supposed to do with workflows, to interact with the workflow items, sorting, paging through them, and then once they're actually at the, review, the workflow review queue, um, making it very easy for them to, to see uh, the workflow items that they have to process. So workflow history. So this is uh, an important one, especially for organizations that really need and are concerned with the tracking of content that, that flows through their system. So from a workflow pr perspective, making sure that they have this comprehensive audit trail of the workflow items in their, in their organization. So this could be for compliance concerns, you know, have more heavily re regulated organizations will look at, look at this as making sure that each step along the way, um, we, ought, we need to know who approved it, um, you know, when did they approve it, or, or reject it, and being able to, uh, to uh, make sure that all that is stored. So, um, and this, for this one, the ability to permanently store the workflow reject comments, um, that's included um, as part of the workflow history, as well as the, viewing the full history of any item that's been in workflow. So again, out of the box, these aren't available. So again, for organizations that really need that, that next level of detail or workflow items, this, this component would provide it. So as, uh, as uh, content items are checked in that go into workflow, it would, it would uh, audit and uh, maintain when that content was checked in, when it was approved, when it was rejected, and, uh, and uh, any notifications that were sent as well. So again, providing that, that comprehensive view into the, into the workflow history. And uh, what that looks like is the following. So at the very top, once the component's enabled, you can click on workflow history for any item and view the, um, the history of that, the full history of that, that item. So um, again, when it was checked in, when it was, you know, when it was revised, at what step were all that, was all that stuff, um, was all that stuff done? And then um, for all the revisions, um, any of that, all that is um, captured as well. So as the workflow item moves through the system, any action that's taken, any comments that are added, all that stuff is, is captured and maintained um, as a full workflow history report that you would see in this view. Workflow release date, another component added to uh, workflow that's part of workflow solution set. For this one, we really heard from customers that you know, wanted to make sure that as, uh, as content is going through workflow, um, stand, the standard integration and the, and, and the standard way it works out of uh, the content server is um, once an once a, um, item is checked into workflow, when it's actually re released from workflow, the date will still be the check-in date. So if you're thinking, you know, as users are looking to find content and the standard um, search capability out of the content server is, is check-in date, any of those items that have been workflow for a while, you know, two, three weeks, will, uh, will show up a lot more on the list, so that might be a lot harder for them to find the content that, that they're looking for. So um, um, what, we, what uh, we Workflow Solutions that allows you to do is the, the ability to update the release date to uh, after, it was, after it was approved through Workflow. So um, the, 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 that new date would be then the release date from Workflow. So again, as users are looking for content, that would be updated. And again, with the standard uh, search capabilities and content server, that, that item would appear much higher on the list. Workflow search. So this one is also uh, very popular because, as most of you probably know, items in workflow can't be found as, as typical you know, searches that are conducted within the content server. So uh, this component allows the users to search for items in workflow based on the content ID or title, the name, the step, the remaining reviewers. Um, the columns that are displayed for that search are all configurable. So again, that's one of the key values of uh, workflow solution set is a lot of the display that you see, it's very configurable on how you want uh, that display to the user. And this includes the fur, um, after the search is conducted, it'll include the number of days that each item has been uh, in the current step. And that's what that looks like 
in this screenshot. So um, you can search for uh, the workflow based on that, that criteria, um, and then this will give you a full list of where um, certain workflow items are at. So if you're, uh, you know, if you're part of a process, if you're a process owner for a particular department, and you're really wondering why um, workflows, there's workflows that still haven't um, been released yet, you can go in and do search on that workflow and see, you know, where it's at in the staff, who owns it currently, um, you know, so on and so forth. So this gives you that really that that one view into um, all your all the items that are currently in workflow. Workflow timeout helpers. So this one comes up a lot where um, you're just having organizations are just having issues or some trouble with advancing workflows through the system, either because, you know, there's multiple things that happen, right? I mean, obviously with workflow, um, some of them might be, you know, I'll get, get to it when I, when I get to it, and then that's just forgotten about. So this component can be used to re-notify the person that's in the current step with the workflow that, hey, they have a workflow item they need to they need to uh, take action on. Um, they can escalate it, so it can it can uh, uh, be escalated to to make sure that you know that the right person gets um, notified that this one is really important and uh, needs to be advanced accordingly. And workflows using this component can also be auto-approved. So, if uh, the configuration could be that if a workflow sits at a certain step for a certain amount of days, that you should uh, the system could should just advance it to the next step. So that just ensures that workflows aren't stuck in a particular queue, for example, or you know by a particular user. Um, they could be auto they could be advanced based on that auto approval uh, auto approval. And it's really configurable as uh, as I mentioned earlier. So uh, based on a based on a schedule, um, you could have this run um, during business hours or on the weekend. So it's uh, again from a scheduling perspective. It's really, uh, really configurable. So that was a lot to cover as far as the various components. What, what I hope came out of the discussion today is that with a lot of these components, it really comes down to the ability for you to help your users and your organization save time when it comes to providing them access to high-value content, providing more visibility into um, certain processes such as workflow, giving the proper notifications to the high-value content that exists in your organization and, and making sure that people are aware of new content being added to the system, as well as being able to quickly load content into the system that, and a lot of content that does exist in the system comes from third parties, uh, third-party systems, and then being able to quickly take that content and load it into the system so it can be um, shared and accessed from a more enterprise perspective. So what we've seen with organizations that have that are using admin suite that comes with all these components is they've really been helped. Um, they've really enabled the organization to increase adoption and productivity. So if you think about um, being able to uh, to promote the various features and functionality that an application like Web, Web Center has, it's really about user ability, the ability of the users to quickly find the information they need, take action on the information, and uh, make sure that they um, are getting access to the information that they should have access to. Um, so with the various components that are, that are included, uh, Admin Suite can, can help them do that as well. Uh, the biggest thing that, that typically comes up as we've, as we've discussed today is, is around security. So uh, making sure that users have the right, are seeing the right content, um, but making sure that the, as a Web Center administrator, you're actually the person that can help um, help uh, make make that happen. So you're not relying relying on the IT department who has control over the directory. Um, a lot of it through um, advanced user security mapping, you can create the necessary rules to just make sure that the uh, roles and accounts within Web Center get mapped from the directory. And so as users go on go into the system, they can quickly access the content that they should and need to have access to. Uh, a lot of organizations look at the full suite and say, well, um, you know, I'm, I'm really interested in, in the ability to improve insight and reporting. So as we showed today, there's a lot of various tools that can be used for, um, you know, auditing who and troubleshooting user access to the system and, and uh, um, the content that they, the, 
um, that the individual should see based on the groups that they're in, um, being able to see um, from a workflow search perspective, the various the number of days workflows done at um, certain step and and uh, how long. Um, so there's just a lot of um, those capabilities that the admin suite adds that Web Center doesn't have out of the box from a reporting perspective. And overall, what we've seen customers say is, you know, as we as we've deployed these solutions that are that are included with admin suite. Um, we, we seem to be leveraging more and more of the inherent functionality. So from a workflow perspective, um, uh, for example, that's probably the most popular one. Um, they're really taking full advantage of the workflow now because they have this new ability and new capabilities to um, you know, search, um, sort the view, change the view of the workflow, um, the, the, the ability to um, notify um, and re-notify and escalate workflows. Um, just those those other capabilities, those value add capabilities that that uh, admin suite provides, they've really been able to um, you know extend their investment and, and increase their investment in the web center. Um, regardless if they're doing a brand new imp implementation or an upgrade, we've just seen a lot of uh, a lot of value that this solution has provided for for web center implementations. So if you're looking for more information on Fishbowl's admin suite for local web center content. <clears throat> We have a full web page, web page regarding the solution. And then from that web page, you can drill down into the more specifics of each component that we covered today. So uh, white papers, demo videos, recorded webinars, um, things like that, those assets are all available on our website. If you do want more information on Fishbowl's admin suite for Oracle Web Center, um, I would encourage you to email our sales department and uh, we'll, we'll uh, um, take your request and what a lot of times is if you're looking for more of an in-depth demo of any of the components that I covered today, we can set that up for you and, and go through uh, much more deeper uh, detail um, uh, regarding any of, any of the components that um, discussed today. But I want to thank everyone for attending today. We, uh, um, we have a lot more information regarding all the solutions that we provide for, for Oracle Web Center. I would encourage you to uh, to find us on the web, find us on our, our blog, as well as through social media. And so I've included here all the different ways that you can um, stay in touch with us and, and contact us and keep up to date on, uh, on the, the other value-add solutions and uh, um, thought leadership articles that we're putting out there for the Web Center community. So with that, I want to thank everyone for attending.